Hello everyone, in today's video I'm going to show you how I fit a fairly standard uh, tubular mortise latch into this internal door. This is a fairly sort of staple really of a carpenter, the sort of thing that um, very quickly we started to learn how to do as apprentices. Once we sort of mastered or hung our first door, the next job after that would be to put this mortise latch in. So this mortise latch is nothing particularly special, uh, it's got a 57mm uh, back set and it's got a loose uh, plate face plate that goes on. So what we basically need to do is drill a hole down into the door to accommodate the body of the latch. We also need to drill a hole through the side of the door to accommodate the spindle that goes through that, that activates it. And then what we need to do is cut a housing out in the edge of the door to accommodate this um, back plate and the face plate. So the first thing we need to do is mark the door. Um, generally, certainly here in the UK, the latch goes in the centre of the door. Now what I do is I just measure down a metre from the top. I think it should be about 990, but maybe I'm lazy, it doesn't really matter. Um, I just measure down a metre, put my marks on the, on the edge of the door, the marks on the side of the door, and then I can start to drill out. Right, so I've changed the angle. Here we are, see the top of the door, put my tape over, measure down. I'm going to metre in this instance. Um, you can choose whatever measurement you like. If you want to get dead centre, that's up to you. I just go a metre. It's about a metre from the top of the door and a metre from the floor. Uh, and then what I do is come down the side of the door. Um, you can square this round, um, but I tend not to because I'd like to avoid trying to put unnecessary marks on the door. But generally the top of the door is square to the edge, so you can hang your tape off the edge of it as well. So I'm going to come down the edge there. My metre mark, same on this side another metre there. Now we've just got to measure the back set and we know that the back set of this latch is 57 mil so all I'll do now is measure down the side 57 mil so that the mark from the top and my 57 mil mark line up. So here you can see this is the metre mark that I put down from the top now I'll just join it up with the 57 mil back back set mark from the face so we'll hear about there look so slightly out but we can just join those up. So now you can see that's the point where the spindle hole will be drilled. I'll do the same on the other side. So I've moved position again. Here we are, um, we're looking towards the end of the door now. If I just zoom that in a little bit, uh, we can see uh, here's the mark down, uh, the back set and the mark down from the top. And this is the mark on the edge of the door. Now what we need to do is get that in the, <clears throat> we need to make a mark in the center of the edge of the door. And what I'm gonna to do to do that is use my a marking gauge. I've set the marking gauge to the centre of the door, uh, which is pretty easy to do that. You just put it in from one side and then just uh, check it on the other side until the pin uh, meets the same hole. So I'm satisfied that that is in the middle. So I'm just gonna score a little mark in there. So now what we've got is our, the centre point of the body of our latch to be drilled out. Right, so now I've got these two marks. I'm just going to put a small uh, pilot drill in. I like to pilot it first because it just helps steer the main auger bit. So I just put one in, in the end there, and then one in each side. You don't want to go all the way through with this because you don't want to break out the other side. Okay, now, now whether or not this is a, I don't think this is a d debate that particularly rages, but I see a lot of people, uh, they'll now drill out the main hole for the latch in the end of the door, and then they will drill the um, holes for the spindle afterwards. I don't do it that way. I like to drill the, the hole for the spindles first, uh, especially when you're doing um, the mortise locks. You can end up, if you drill this bit out first, and then you drill that bit out afterwards, you can get a lot of splitting out inside the actual housing for the lock. So I just put the from each side. Obviously we don't want to go in all the way from one side because it would make a right mess breaking out here. So we just go halfway in. And in from the other side. And now we can push the hole in the end. I'll just a quick one here to show you this drill if I can see it. But I, I've filed, where can we see that? Yeah, look. So if you can just see, I've filed a groove into this drill here. And this is exactly the right depth that the latch body needs to be. So it saves me having to mess about. I mean, you could put a bit of tape on something in here, but this is the, the main drill that I use for my lock, uh, for my latch body. So I just filed that in there. Only takes a couple of moments, but it does save a lot of aggro because you know how deep to put it into. So let's, let's 
stick that in there, put it on slower speed because it won't like the high, high speed. And just, again, because I put this pilot drill in here, um, especially with these auger bits, you see they've got this big screw on the end. Uh, can I focus on that? No. Uh, these auger bits have got this uh, screw on the end and um, if you're not careful, it can split the wood out. So it's always good to pilot it first. Now down to the mark that's filed into the drill, so I know I can pull it out. Lovely. So now because uh, I don't want to use too big a drill bit, but because this is uh, sort of square or rectangular, it won't actually fit. Although it'll fit in the width of the hole, it won't fit in the in the length of it. So I'm just going to put a chisel in to just chisel out those tiny corners. I could just use a bigger drill bit, but then it does start to get quite close to the end of the faceplate housing, which I'd rather not. So I'll just get my, I think it's a three quarter chisel, is it 15 mil, three quarter chisel? And just tap that. Out. Just clean that out with a smaller chisel out. Give it a blow out. Now the latch should slide in, which it does, super duper. So what I'm gonna do now is get the face plate, um, place that over it, and I'm just going to mark where those fixing holes are. I'm not gonna use those exactly at the minute, because what I'm now gonna do is get the gauge back, and I'm just gonna put the gauge over those holes, just to make sure that we're, that we're dead center. And then I'll just, again, with a pilot drill, it's only a two mil a pilot drill here. I'll just put a little pilot in there. Using a pilot drill just means that the, the screw's gonna go where you want really rather than where it wants if you if you don't put a pilot drill in, the grain can tend to, to pull it about. So what I'm gonna do now, uh, again, and this is just a method I like to do, is I'm gonna fix this back plate on now. I'm going to fix it on backwards. So now, what I should do now is, uh, let's just zoom that out a little bit. Uh, with my Stanley knife, I'm now very carefully going to score around uh, this keep here. So very gently, I'm, I'm using my hands against the door so I don't end up putting too much force on the knife and slipping. So sort of keep my hand on the door. Obviously you've got to watch your fingers and everything here. Um, so just pull that down nice and gently, keeping the blade sort of tight to the edge of that keep. Do that both sides. Again, very careful, using my hand here to steady myself because we don't want to slip down the door. And then here, same again, but I'm going to use this thumb to push the back of the knife. So I've got lots of really good control. Okay, we don't need to go mad scoring this. You can just draw around this if you wanted to. Uh, I don't because I think this is more accurate and you don't have pencil lines, and especially with oak doors like this, um, you want to really keep the pencil lines to a minimum because uh, they're very, very difficult to get off. So there we go, look, we've got a nice uh, outline of the, the face plate, so now we can uh, just carefully chisel that out. The first knock in with the chisel is not going to be right on the on the line. Uh, I'm going to come in a little bit because because of the way that the chisel is ground, it always tends to get pushed by the grain a little bit. So we just come back off that line, and we can come back in later and clean that out. So I'll try and see if I just zoom that out a little bit. Right. So let's put something there. I don't know if my hand's going to yeah, it's right in the way there. Look. Right, let's see if I can do this. Hold the chisel so you can at least see it. I do the same on the bottom.
awkward. Now what I'm going to do is clean a section out up to that line. We're up to the... And then you're going to do the same coming down. And now I'll just clean out towards the top. So there. So that's sort of the bulk of it. We have to be sort of careful around the edges. So what I'm going to do now very carefully uh, is just pair up the side. Now you have to be really careful on the sides here because you, you know I'm looking to feel the timber all the time. But if you go gung-ho in there, because it's quite close to the edge of the door, you just, you just split this out. So be very, 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 very careful here. Take it off in tiny little bits. There's no rush, same on this side. Just nice and gentle. Because we've scored it with a knife, we've gone a fair way in already. Just super, super gentle. Okay. And then we can just clean them out again. Same with the top. Clean it down, same on this side. Tiny bit more at the top there. Using my hands in the way. I'm not normally cat candid like this. I'm just trying to keep my hands out of the way for the camera. And remember, you know, you're better off taking small, small chunks out at a time, trying the latch in. You can always take a bit more out. Um, if you take too much out, again, it's not the end of the world because you can pack it, but it's better not to. So now what I'm doing is just going back back to my original lines look now. Just cleaning out that last little bit that we left. It just means we get a nice accurate cut. Ooh. Let's get that in there. And then we can just clean that out. Nice and gentle. I know this might look like I'm taking a long time but I'm showing you how to do it properly um, you've got to learn to, you've got to learn to do these things properly to start with um, and then you know you can you can work on your speed as you get more experience um, to me latches are quite important because if you don't make a good job of them technically they're always on display right so that's the bulk of that out now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try uh, the latch body and see where we're at so I'll put the body in first, and then we've got the face plate to go over it. Let's have a look. I think, yeah, I think I'm happy with that. So I'll grab the screws. As I said, you're better off to leave it a bit shy and take a bit more out than take too much out, and then you've got to pack it, which is not the end of the world, but it's just better if you don't have to. So we'll put our screws in. Look at that, lovely. Beautiful. So we got our latch in, and now we've got to look to getting the keep in. We've got that in nice now. I'm trying on the camera. Yeah, so we've got a nice, you know, neat. Whoa. We've got a nice, neat housing on there now. You know, we really don't want to be having any gaps around here if we can. Uh, and then if we look in the side there, that's in the right position for the spindle to go through. So we're happy with the, the latch fitting now, we're happy with the faceplate, all looks neat and tidy, and now the next job is to transfer the actual latching part of the latch over onto the lining so we can fit the keep, and that'll be the job we do next. So what I'm gonna do next is find out the distance from the latch to the face of the door, because uh, this will be the same as the distance as the hole required in the keep to the face of the lining, and what I'm gonna do is just set my, what I've set here is my combination square. I just literally set it uh, so that the the blade of my square is hitting the latch, uh, so that gives me that accurate sort of measurement between the face of the door and the face of the latch. And now what I'll do is go and push, um, mark the latch uh, against the lining, and then use this square to uh, transfer the the amount the latch is set back from the face. I'll just put a little pencil mark either side of that latch. 
And now I put that mark on the lining. So I can get it there. Hopefully I'm going to do this and film at the same time. So that uh, signifies where the latch, the, level, the height of the latch. Now I'll get my square that we set up earlier and put that in here and just run that down. So now I'll just buy eye, I'll just bring these through. So now we've got the position where our latch will actually um, go into the lining. So what I need to do now is put the keep against this uh, and line up the hole in the keep with that line and then we can mark around the keep. So I've got the keep here, this is quite a wide flat keep. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is uh, hold it by hand. Let me see now, I'll bring it around here a bit, something better? Yeah, hold it by hand. So obviously this is the part of the keep that the latch uh, strikes into or, or holds back to. So I'm gonna put that flush with that line we put on earlier, keeping the hole within these other two lines as well. Now I'm gonna ho hold this, um, I've got a pretty good eye for this, so I'm, I'm going to sort of hold it here and then I'm just going to draw around it. I know that that will be accurate enough because of all the years I've been doing it. But, you know, if you weren't quite sure, you could put a square on here and measure back this just to double check. Now, what we need to do is I'm just going to put my chisel around the outside edge of this, set it back a little bit, and then I'll take the rest of this out with a router because this is quite a thin plate and... Um, if you chisel it, it can tend to make a little bit of a mess on the back here. But I understand not everyone's got a router, and if that is the case, then you just have to take uh, take your time chiseling this out. So I'm just going to go just round it on the bottom, just keep back slightly from the marks again, because I said that the chisel will drift down. Right. On the top, right still. And keep it back from the marks. You can always take a bit more off. And then just gently there. There we go. So what I'm going to do now, as I said, in fact, I'll tell you what, I, will, I won't use the router. I'll take this out by hand. I think that's probably, that's probably fairer because most people might not have a router. So uh, what we'll do is just put a series of small, we don't need to go too deep here, just a series of very small chops in. Okay, there we go. And now we very gently can take those out. I'm gonna pair it in from the front here, very gently. So very gently, I'm just gonna pair in from the edge here. Don't need to go mad. It's, it's, it's not ideal here because this, um, this wall is returning, but I just very gently just chisel that out. I'm gonna to have to change position here because I'm really awkward chiseling this and I don't want to split it because I'm trying to get it on the camera as well. So let's change position. Right, I've changed position, but I can, I can get, get a better hold of the chiseling because I'm you know, i trying to film it, but I don't want to wreck this in doing so. So we just very carefully just pair this out. Again, we don't need to go mad. We can always take more out afterwards. Let's get the key and see what that's like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that fits in there quite nice. I might just take a little bit more out of there. So that fits in there quite nicely. So what I'm going to do now is just put a pencil in these holes here. Can we see that? In these holes here and round the inside of the latch plate there because we've got a black sort of keeper box that goes on here so you don't see the grain. So I've got this keeper box now and all I'm going to do is just line it up with these holes that I've made. And I draw around it. Because that's got to be let in very slightly as well. There we go. So what I'm going to do now to take the bulk out for this sort of back keeper box, whatever you want to call it, I'm just going to put a force and a bit in there. This will just take the bulk out. Force a bit's good because it leaves a nice flat bottom to the hole. 
Now I've sort of got, got these lines to work to. I might <laughs> move around again. Let's go with this, something like that, shall we? How's that? Not bad. Right, so I'm now just going to take the bulk of this out. I'm not a big fan of these keeper boxes because you have to take so much of the, so much of the lining out. When I used to do them without these keeper boxes, you just make a really nice, neat job of the, uh, you know, this, this part we were taking out. And uh, it wasn't that offensive to look at. But anyway, there we go. That's that part out. Now I'm just going to go round these lines because we need to just chisel a tiny bit out for the wings of that back box, key box, whatever you want to call it. So just go around that nice and gently. It doesn't matter if it's slightly too deep because the striker plate is fitting on the rest of this here. And now just very carefully tease those out. Grains all over the place. So look here. Right. So, fingers crossed. We got our keeper box and our striker plate. Key box going there, yep, that's nice. Strike about over the top. Yeah, it's looking good. Now I'm going to pre drill that like I pre drill everything. Keep a box in there. Again, you, I'm quite lucky here because the grain, we've got a nice sort of straightish piece of grain, but you know, a bit further up the door, there's a massive, uh, a bit further up the line, there's a massive knot here. And as, any, as anyone knows who does this, it's absolutely awful when you get, you get, have to do this against a knot and it's trying to pull everywhere. So I'm going to pre-drill these. Okay, just stops the screw from wandering. Get it in position. Put the screws in. Lovely. Yeah, brilliant. So, uh, really happy with that. Keeps in, latches in. Let's see if it shuts. Lovely. Perfect. Really happy with that. So just give that a test a few times. Lovely. Now when we put the door stops on, we can obviously fit the door stop so it pulls nicely against this, this kit, the latch pulls nicely against the key. So yeah, that's it. That's the way I do it. There's lots of different ways of doing it. I should also note that I will say that this has got a loose uh, face plate on this, uh, on these latches. If you didn't have a loose face plate, I would just push the latch in anyway and, and still screw it up temporarily and draw around it. So uh, that's just the way I like to do it because then you don't end up with pencil marks unnecessarily. So there you go. Uh, I hope you found this uh, video useful of me fitting a simple tubular mortise latch. This is fairly much sort of bread and butter work of a carpenter. It's something that we're taught um, you know, quite early on in our careers um, and it's quite satisfying when you know, make a nice job of it. Uh, the other job to do now on here is to fit the handles and I've done a video previously uh, uh, showing that. So I hope you may have found this uh, interesting. Thanks for watching.